Hi. Hi, Taz. Welcome. Thank you so much for spending some time with us at the Music Preserve stage. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, of course. Okay, so um, I guess we're going to start with uh, how did you get the nickname Taz? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a kind of a short story. So I was in, I live in New York, and in New York, there are these School of Rock type programs where kids, young kids between 8 and about 12, can go and play with other kids. And uh, we had a music director, and it just so happened that that music director gave everybody nicknames just because just it was just a fun thing. And he could never figure out, you know, what to give me. And then one day he comes in and I'm just like trying to shred as fast as possible. And he's like, you shred as fast as the Tasmanian devil. That's what you're going to be. <laughs> and then it shortened down to Taz because, you know, nobody likes to say my last name. You know, it's pretty long, but. That's yeah, the Tasmanian devil. That was, that's how you got your nickname, your teacher. That's funny. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, and so how old are you? I'm uh, currently 16. 16. And so. Yeah. How did you first, um, you know, get started in music? How did you first get inspired? Well, I've, I've always been, I had always been uh, listening to music from, you know, a young age. Just, you know, straight out of the womb, I was listening to, you know, all blues music and rock music. And, I mean, any, anything that I could listen to, even pop music back in the day or back when I was younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no back in the day here. I don't know why I just said that, but... <laughs> We can pretend like it was back in the day. <laughs> but yeah, back in the early 2000s. <laughs> but play, I was listening, you know, to everything. And my dad had always, you know, put on, you know, movies of rock bands playing, you know, in the house. And, you know, I'd drum on the pots and pans and stuff. And then, you know, suddenly he put on the movie School of Rock, you know, the, the DVD. And I never knew that a kid could play guitar. I, never, I just never knew, never thought about it. And... An eight-year-old me was like, Dad, can I play guitar? And he was like, yeah, sure. I'll buy you one. <laughs> and he did. And now we're here. Wow. Right. That was a good move by your dad. <laughs> so, um, so you were inspired by School of Rock, and then you wound up playing uh, the lead on School of Rock, right? In, on Broadway? Yeah, I ended up, uh, f it went full circle. Ended up playing for two and a half to three years uh, playing the role of Zach, which is the guitar player on Broadway, which is, wow. I mean, it was crazy, that whole thing. And I mean, I'm so grateful to the company and everybody who gave me a chance. I had never acted. I had never, you know, sung really well or danced at all. And I mean, that's what I had to do. Yeah. As, but, you know, playing guitar, I mean, like, for me, that was a big moment for me because, you know, that was one of the reasons, like I explained, like a minute ago that it was, you know, one of the instrumental reasons why I started playing guitar. And I mean, that, that, that just, it was crazy in my mind to even get that. And I mean, there were so many kids, you know, going for it. And I don't know if I was, you know, the most qualified, but they took a chance and I'm so happy. It might've been did. the hair. The hair is really cute. <laughs> 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 I would have probably picked you too. <laughs> I mean, you'll see, like, yeah, I'll be, you know, Photographer, I was talking to a photographer here, and he was like, you know, I really enjoy your shots. You know, your hair is flying all over. You know, it's cool. I like it. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. I'm not going to talk about hair here. So I'd like to talk a little bit about your musical influences. Now, you've been traveling the world. You've been playing with, um, with all of our musical heroes. You know, in especially in these last these last you know few years of of, of your life, um, I was wondering if you could tell the audience a little bit about um, some of your uh, some of your uh, neatest or uh, most unbelievable experiences that you've had on stage thus far. Well, to some of my you know most unbelievable the experiences on stage, I mean any any time that I get to play with anybody, right. whether it's you know. In the smallest dive bar there is, or you know, in front of twenty thousand people, it's mm -hmm. just I treat it every way. Any chance that I get to play with anybody, even and my band, it's just I mean I have so much joy and right. I mean I can't really single out one. I mean every sure. single time, like you know I treat them the same and I'm so happy to be there. You know, it's the thing I enjoy doing the most. But I mean there there was a uh, there was one time that I was playing uh, the national anthem. You no, know, on guitar, right. Jimi Hendrix-esque, you know, his style, at Madison Square Garden, which is, 
for before Nick's game, and like you know, the lights were dim, the yeah. spotlight was on me, everybody was watching in Madison you know, Square Garden, and it was like, but I, I was, it was crazy, and yeah. like part of it was like. LeBron James was playing there, and like he's my favorite player, and I saw him like, and I was like, oh my god, but no, part of it, I mean, that's just the, my best, my favorite venue, right? And it's you know, I, it's my goal to be able to play there one day, and that was really fun. That was sure. a really fun couple that, seconds. I mean, that's wonderful. You're living quite, quite the, quite the life already, right? And I'm sure there's all sorts of wonderful experiences to happen. A lot of them gonna, are going to be happening throughout the rest of tonight and 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 tomorrow as you're the art, artist at large here at the Doheny Blues Festival. Um, Patty, you have another question or two, and then we can um, ask the audience for some questions. Um, so, do you um, do you? Have you learned a lot about the like the history of of music and blues, or do you have, have you had time yet to to study? Or have you learned that? Yeah, uh, my dad has helped me with that. Uh, I mean, he it started with you know jazz, and I mean, which went into blues, you know, with the slaves, and I mean Robert Johnson, and you know, he showed me all that stuff, you know, back from way back when, and you know how it's evolved into you know rock, and then classic rock. You know, you know Elvis, and I mean, then it got to you know, you know, hair metal some some way. But I mean, it's it's the history of it in these last you know hundred to two hundred years. I mean, there's really a lot to unpack, and I enjoyed you know my first couple of times you know looking through articles on these guys like Robert Johnson and Muddy Waters and you know Howlin' Wolf, and it's really cool to see. Yeah, uh, that's great. Um, okay, so I think we're gonna take it out now to see if the audience has any questions. All right. Is, you got a question? Okay. All right, I'll get right back there. I'll get right back there. There's only so much hustle left at this time of the day, right? Don't be afraid to meet me halfway, my man. <laughs> you mentioned singing at a great event. Why not the Super Bowl? Excuse me? Why not sing the Super Bowl? I would love to do that, too. I mean, you know, anywhere. Yeah, I mean, that that maybe, would be cool. And maybe you could do that. Okay. Yeah, one day. That's that would be that would be awesome. And there was another question over here. All right. Yeah, oh, glad to see you again. <laughs> Hi, awesome playing with North Mississippi All Stars. Um, how did you cut your teeth playing? Because I know a lot of people with a YouTube age, they're sitting at home playing in their bedroom. Did you like play with bands early on or jams or? Yeah, how, well, how did you build your... Well, it started in my bedroom, you know, watching YouTube videos. Very lucky to grow up in this age where, you know, if I want to learn a song, I can just Google it, and then, I mean, I see somebody playing it or I see somebody teaching it, which is uh, very cool, and I've realized how grateful I am to live in this digital age, but uh, then, then after that, I got a teacher at, like, nine, and then yeah, after it, about a year of playing, and then uh, my dad reached out to somebody to see if I could, you know, play with other kids. And that's how I got into the School of Rock type program. And then I started playing with some adults. And I mean, all the sit-ins that I've done and all the shows that I've done with my own band, uh, it's really helped me to, you know, keep, keep, keep on progressing in my playing. And I mean, I always, you know, play in my bedroom every day. And I mean, it's, it's, I treat every sit-in like I'm playing in my bedroom. Yeah, that, that's awesome. We have another question right here as well. Hi, um, I had a quick question. How young do you think it is to start playing guitar? What age is too young? Because my three-year-old granddaughter just asked me for a pink guitar because she wants to learn to rock out. Come well, on. I, Come I, on, don't think, I don't think any age is too young to learn any instrument. There's definitely, like, I mean, there's definitely, like, half-size guitars and, like, fourth size violins that you could go and get but it really determines on the strength of their fingers because the first you know couple weeks of playing guitar it's hard because you got to build calluses you know it's it's finger on metal so it's it gets hard but you know you got to push through and it's really like a disciplinary thing like my dad knew that I was gonna you know go in my bedroom every day and practice you know and if, if they're at the maturity level of that then you know it's really worth it so, so the answer is now, Grandma. That's right. Yes, yeah. it's always now. Always try it. <laughs> all right, all right. We got another question over here for you. Hey, Taz, good to have you here. Uh, so at 16 years old, you don't see a lot of 
16 year olds embracing blues like you do. So could you talk to us a little bit about how your friends back in New York have embraced blues because of your success? Uh, can, you, can you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, how have your friends embraced blues because of your success playing? Have they learned from you? My, my friends, uh, I've had the same friends since kindergarten. I'm, I'm very selective with them, you know? Like, not a, they all treat me, you know, the same way that they did, you know, like 10 years ago than they did as they do now. And uh, they've I've showed them some stuff, and they've really been digging it. And also, I have a lot of friends from home and, you know, from all around the country who are you know, also guitar players. And, I mean, we talk about music all the time. And, I mean, yeah, I, I have a lot of friends. There's a lot of guitar players out there, as well as, you know, kid drummers, kid, you know, I'm friends with a lot of people my age and younger or a little bit older, who, who play instruments and embrace the blues among other genres, such as, you know, jazz, hip hop, and I mean, it's really the fusion of everything. Everybody has something to say, and I mean, I listen to their genres, they listen to the stuff that I like, and it's really cool, yeah. Great, great. We have time for a couple more. Oh, here we go. I'll, I'll be right over there. I just want to compliment you on not only your talent, but your, your humbleness oh, thank that, you so that much. really shines through. Um, I wanted to just have you share about um, writing originals or recording or, or where you're at around that. Yeah, so uh, I have my own band uh, titled My Name, and uh, I, I've been writing for a while, for about a year and a half to two years, and uh, we're, we're touring around, you know, I get to play, you know, on the weekends and in the summers a lot, you know, I'm going to some festivals with my band. I'd love for my band to play here one day and, I mean, to show you guys, but, I mean, I've been writing a lot, you know, it's really, it's really cool. I, I love sit-ins, but I also love, you know, like, writing my own lyrics and my own stuff. I really connect really personally to that, you know, and I put my heart and soul into the music that I write, so... I mean, it's really fun to play that stuff, and I, I love writing music, and uh, we're, we're in the process of recording right now, and we should have something out soon. All right. Very good. We're all looking forward to that. Sounds good. Ho ho hold on. Just uh, uh, Pardon me, sir. Sir, I'm going to let this gentleman use this microphone. Hold on. <laughs> Really quick, um, I saw you on YouTube, you know, because I was checking you out to see what, what was going on. And I really appreciate the fact that um, all of us are about 150 years old and you're like 16. And I want to know what your drive is to love such an older school blues and the way you play it really expresses that blues and that old school. Well, uh, Thank you. I, I've been listening to every genre, you know, my dad and all my friends have made sure that, you know, I'm listening to everything and showing me stuff. And, I mean, I listen to the new stuff, too. And I listen to blues, jazz, you know, rock, hip-hop, even classical. And I take the best elements that I think of certain genres and certain improvisational things, and I try to implement them into my playing and, you know, take my soul out and, you know, build an individuality. And I think that's really important for every artist to do, you know, make their mark on music and... I mean, the blues especially, there's so much to express. I mean, in the 12-bar blues, it's customary to get a little improvisation in with your instrument to where you can really tell the audience how you're feeling, whether it's happy, sad, or, you know, and if, if I'm not, you know, 100% invested or if I'm not, if I don't have a message, like, I, I always try to make sure that I go up and, you know, I really put my emotions into every note. And, I mean, it's really... It's really fun to do, and that's where, you know, my headspace is. You know, there's, all, especially with the blues, the reason why it's so timeless is because, I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on in the world back then when people like Robert Johnson was doing it, and there's a lot of people, I mean, sorry, there's a lot of things going on in the world right now, and, I mean, it's just as easy, you know, to write songs about that or to implement, you know, maybe the bad, worst things that are going on in your life into your playing and, I mean, I, I play when I'm happy, sad, angry, et cetera. You know, my guitar is my best friend. And that should be every instrument with everybody. Wonderful, wonderful. Deep. 
These are great questions and, and great answers, too. We sure appreciate it. And Music Preserves really appreciates you all taking the time to come over to the area and, and, and let us introduce our programs to you. So musicpreserves.org, and if you do that social media thing, please take a moment. I know Taz is going to like us on Instagram. <laughs> we have a couple more questions if you have time. All right. Well, we just came all the way across because we saw how young you are, and it's amazing that you're up on this stage and like have come so far being so young. And we're excited to hear your sound. And are you going to be playing now, or when are you playing? Because we want to hear you. I'm so excited. Uh, I'd like it to be a surprise. <laughs> you probably will see me again today. I'll say that. <laughs> and you'll see me tomorrow, too. I mean, I, I like to keep you surprised. Just in case something happens or not, and I mean, I, I like, yeah, I, you'll, you'll, you'll see me today. You'll see me. I'll, I'll, wi I'll whisper it just in her ear. Sure, yeah, <laughs> whisper it in her ear. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you. All right, you got another, you got a question? All right. How about your family, your parents? Musically inclined? Uh, are they in the business themselves? Uh, there is no musicality of my family whatsoever. <laughs> besides, I mean, my dad likes to say he plays the record if you know what that means. <laughs> and my mom does too. Yeah. My brother also plays music. But the first person I think to play music in our family is like my great, great grandmother. But the thing that's interesting about it is she could play by ear, meaning she could like hear a song or like do something and you know play it straight away. And I'm kind of like that too. I have something called perfect pitch where I could do that. And I mean, I'm so grateful to my family, my mom, my brother, and uh, my dad. and. Every, everybody in my extended family, you know, cousins, aunts, uncles, because they always come out and they always support. And, I mean, I, the music has taken us, you know, to sit great places we've got to visit. I mean, obviously, this is such a beautiful place. Love being here. And I've been to so many places that I never thought I would ever reach. And I, I think I could tell a story about that. So um, my, my, I, I remember when I was probably seven or six, six or seven, I asked my dad, I was like, can I, let's go to L.A. I want to go to L.A. Because, I, you know, I was watching, you know, like MTV and, like, all these guys in L.A. were, like, doing the unplugged stuff, and I thought that was so cool. So I was like, Dad, let's go to L.A. And he was like, when you, when you can pay for the flights, we can go to L.A. And then a year later, the Ellen Show called, and they were like, we want to bring your son on. And so he looked at me, and he was like, you're going to L.A. So, I mean, it, it's, been, it's been a hell of a ride. I'm so grateful for any time that I could play anywhere. And, I mean, I think that story pretty much sums it up. So. All right. Okay. Um, before the next question, we, we had another question from a group of friends here and just asking if you'd give a quick birthday greeting to Liz here. Liz, happy birthday. Hey, there she is. Can we sing happy birthday? Can we make that happen? <laughs> let's do it. All right, Liz is the name, right? Oh, wow. All right, let's do it. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Liz. Happy birthday to you. Wow. That was awesome. What do you think about that? That was amazing. Yeah. This is All such, right. It's well, such now, a way to spend your birthday being out here. It's really nice out. Yeah. I like it. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for doing that for her. Uh, All right. We have another question here. Sure. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say uh, on top of being humble, I think you're very articulate too. Mm -hmm. So uh, I very much appreciate that. But I'm the grandpa of the three-year-old that asked grandma for that pink guitar. So, you know, given all the time that you've invested in the things that you love, or the thing that you love, how do you, uh, how do you manage your education? Uh, school's always been very important to me before I play guitar. I mean, I was always, you know, getting straight A's, and I made sure. That's my mom's side. My mom is like, I mean, she worked hard, and I mean, she's an immigrant. So she, she really worked hard and, you know, and took everything, you know, especially, you know, in college, like she worked her ass off to be able to, you know, work. And she still works her ass off as well as my dad to be able to, you know, support us as a family. And that's something I'll always be grateful for. So she's always like, you know, you got it. If you keep up the grades, you could play. You know, it's always been the deal. 
and it's still the deal. And I'm in, I'm in high school, and I'm taking some college classes, and I'm still trying to, you know, keep my grades up. And, you know, sometimes it's a struggle. Sometimes, you know, on the red eye that we're taking tomorrow back to New York, I'll be probably doing schoolwork, you know, because I'm so, I'm so committed to, you know, playing guitar, and I will do anything for it. So, I mean, the schoolwork, I, I still enjoy it, though. I mean, I love, you know, learning history, and math has always been good to me. And, I mean, everything. I've always enjoyed it. So, I mean, it's, it's not... It's not that much of a bargain. That's great, and it's nice to have that good influence as well. You know, I always told my kids when in school, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. <laughs> it's true. All right, we have another question for you. Thank you very much, Taz. Great to have you here. Just wanted to ask you, uh, who's the? Uh, what's the name of the most obscure unknown guitarist that recently has blown you away that you didn't know about? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Didn't mean to stop you. Yeah. There's so many. I mean, but I mean, this is not, I mean, this guy's famous. Like, this is not like unknown, but I can name an obscure guitarist that I always take from. John McLaughlin is just, you know, he's killing it. Yeah. I mean, I saw him two years ago and I got to meet him. Nicest guy I've ever met. And I mean, his, the way his brain works and his guitar, I mean, he's playing stuff that nobody has ever done. And that's something I'll always, you know, look up to. All right, do we have any other questions? We have, we have time for just another question or two here before we have to let Taz go, not to play on another stage. <laughs> Definitely. Not. All right, would you, does someone have a question here? Hey, Taz, thanks for being out here this weekend. Um, you've played with a bunch of awesome people. Is there any particular person or band that you haven't played with that is like on the top of your list to be on stage with? You mean th this week or just in general? No, in general. Uh, Number one. I've, I've been very grateful to be able to play with uh, some of my heroes, but um, that's a good, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Uh, I love to play with this guy named Anderson Pack. Who's yes. a, yeah, he's a really good. He's a really, really good player. Uh, he he's such, he's a drummer and he he's yeah, he's blown me away. I mean, another guy's you know Thundercat. I love to play with John Mayer too. I mean, any anybody who gives me a yeah. chance, I love to play with really. All right. You, Patty, did Patty, did you have a question for him? You got one? Okay. Taz, this is off the hook, but do you have any pets? Do I have any pets? Yes. Uh, no, I did not have any pets. There's a very specific reason, and I don't think I could share it. <laughs> all right, all right. My dad said I could share it. So he, uh, he said his excuse for us not having pets is that my brother and I are his rats. <laughs> that, that's his excuse, and I, I think that's really funny. But Yeah, but I'll, I'll never, he'll, never, he'll never get me a pet. That'll never happen. <laughs> All right, I, I think that that's going to conclude the, the audience portion of the, of the interview. Patty, do you have any closing thoughts? To, let's thanks, Ted. Thank you guys so much. Um, those are amazing questions. So this was, this was a really great um, back and forth. So thank you so much, Taz, for, for spending time with us. Well, thank you so much and, for having us. Um, I know everybody here really enjoyed uh, hearing you talk and, and, and learn more about you. So we really appreciate you being part of the Music Preserves Foundation's stage today at the festival. And, and good luck. I can't wait to see you play this weekend. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, guys.